Um, uh, another experience in our family was where somebody quite young got seriously ill in his 30s and needed a nursing home and it didn't really matter how much money the family had. Um, we couldn't buy the kind of care that we wanted for him. So it very much concerns me that, that the state of the nation at the moment is you can't get the kind of care you would want for yourself even when you or whoever she was she said oh and and there are buses and he can go on li she can go on little trips and excursions <laughs> and uh, she can make she might he might make friends or whichever it was might make friends it was like a mother talking about her kindergarten child mm. and that made me really angry Wilkinson you had of course a horror story didn't you with your mother who was killed yep. in a nursing home yep. Um, I'm hearing what everyone says and, and watching that film at the start really got to me because I did all that with mum and like Sue um, I mortgaged my house and bought a unit next to me for mum and my, my brother is intellectually disabled and she'd looked after him since dad had died in 72 and I was their main provider and carer and her legal power of attorney and I would emphasise medical power of attorney which is vital um, she, her big concern was leaving Philip of course and then she had a heart attack and unfortunately at the time I thought it was fabulous they restarted a heart and casualty and so she survived and she couldn't go back to the nursing home and as the lady here said um, I was told in the morning that there was a bed available and I had till lunch time to take it I got the best advice I could in three hours and put her into this high dementia unit where it was the, the management was fabulous and I was really really thrilled and then there was a change in management now this was a federally accredited aged care unit and I'll just list what happened. Um, first the most minor things were severely neglected bottom so it was oozing mm. fluid and she couldn't sit down and I found her with a towel tucked between the legs one day. Um, a year before she actually was killed I started becoming very very concerned about the, the risk of volatile in particular they were male residents that were moved in and I wrote letters to the management and to the owners of the home saying that I really feared for my mother's life. I had seen her being sexually abused. Um, nothing was done other than a token gesture. And then in the February, I wrote in the October, and in the February she was assaulted and knocked to the ground by the man that shared the room and the bathroom next door. Even knowing that my fears had come to pass, they moved another man into the unit who had a history, a recorded history of both sexual and physical catastrophic reactions. And then in the June, she started dripping blood from her vagina. She was 91 with a hysterectomy, I might add, and no one seemed concerned about that. They didn't even ring and tell me. I was left to discover that when I toileted them one day. But when I went to them and said about the bleeding, that was nothing. And then when she told me that the man in her room at night was hurting her, at night and it was too dreadful to talk about she broke down and sobbed in my arms for the first time I'd ever seen her sob and they just said she was living in the past now I knew my mum's past and I knew she'd never been abused by anybody and um, things just went progressively worse after that she wouldn't stay in her room at night she'd walk the halls at night screaming I'd be saying mum's psychotic it's not Alzheimer's and they wouldn't listen to me they kept saying it's perfectly normal Val so I started feeling like I didn't know my mother at all and then um, I got a phone call to say she'd been injured and she'd been assaulted by this man that had been moved in a month afterwards and um, she took six days to die and we slept on the floor in her room and we had to lock the door to stop the man coming through to get to her at night and that's when I realised that she'd been telling me the truth when she said that she'd been getting raped and that all these people that I kept putting faith in and I'd been doing so much I mean I, I didn't know what else I was supposed to do but when you're told that you're getting it wrong and your mother's going mad and you can't stop it and I no longer had medical power of attorney so I couldn't take her out of the place but where do you take them? There's no beds and um, I have to live with the guilt of that for the rest of my life.